Delighted now to be joined by Down Senior Area Manager Ronan Jehan, um, Saoirse Bolfin and Willie Mayer to look back on the weekend's hurling action in the preliminary quarterfinals as well as briefly looking ahead to this weekend's uh, quarterfinals which take place on Saturday in Turles. But before we do that, um, Willie, just coming to you first, um, you're obviously manager of Bennett's Bridge and you're hosting a uh, a big club hurling tournament um, this weekend. Yeah, no, look, we're delighted, I suppose, this weekend where uh, I suppose the background very much was around and was just talking to people. I'm living in Bennett's Bridge here for the last <laughs> five or six years and just, I suppose, talking to people and, and reliving history as regards in the 50s and 60s and early 70s, Bennett's Bridge won 12 county titles in 17 years. So they were, the I suppose, the tournament kings pre uh, club all Ireland series and all that so we try to revitalize that with the I suppose with the split season now there's an opportunity here we feel to 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 get big teams to come and maybe play tournaments like years ago and again I can remember my youth going to tournaments with my dad and uh, and, and uncles and all and bits and pieces so that's what we're trying to do we have Kilmallock, Ballygunner, uh, Thurla Sarsfields and ourselves playing the weekend so uh, full day Saturday, 20 minutes aside matches. Hopefully teams will be fairly full, I suppose, Barda, Barda, maybe the few county guys that are getting a little break. But at the same time, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it and it, sh- it, sh- it should be a great day. We're starting at two o'clock and anyone in the area, uh, we'd appreciate their support if they're, if they're into looking at good hurling. Absolutely. Sounds like a fantastic tournament with some of those uh, teams. So make sure if you're around to check that out. Um, I suppose starting first with uh, Antrim Cork um, last weekend, Ronan, you were the one, um, I suppose, here in Corrigan Park. Um, what was it like, first of all, Antrim and Cork in Corrigan Park? Yeah. Uh, first, first, I'd have to kind of hold up my hand and admit it was in Corrigan Park with, uh, with my Cork hat on, my wee man was <laughs> in Cork jersey, etc. But anyway, no, look, um, fantastic. Look, I think, no, the... the the first thing to say is fantastic occasion, you know, in terms of packed Corrigan Park, great atmosphere, not just in the ground, but down around the the local area down at the bottom of White Rock and in the in the very on the Anytown Road. Um big travelling court crowd to be fair, you know, relative to to the overall attendance. And that kind of added to the to, to the occasion. I think St. John's did a fantastic job in terms of hosting it, etc. The pitch was in immaculate condition. And, um, you know, look, just a great occasion. And it's fantastic that next year, not only are Antrim in Division 1 again, but they also are in the McCarthy Cup. So there's going to be more days like that, which is going to be brilliant. Um, I suppose the one downside was that Casement hasn't been built yet, you know, and I was just even thinking, you know, if Casement had been built, we'd have had my own, my own club would have had all of our juveniles up with at the match. We would have had a, you know, a challenge match organised, etc. So I think that's the importance of those kind of games in the context of Ulster Hurling. So, you know, um, that's the first thing I would say. In terms of the match itself, um, you know, uh, just we're talking just before we 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 started recording there. Um, Antrim very competitive. Um, probably felt a wee bit disappointed, to be honest. At half time, should have been ahead. You know, Kobe Cunning, who usually is very good on freeze, had missed a few. Um, you know, James McNaughton then went on them and I think he maybe only missed one the rest of the game. But Antrim, if they'd been four or five points ahead at half time possibly wouldn't have been flattered by that. Um, you know, Cork got a penalty as well. You know, um, there wasn't a black card shown for it. So I'm not sure why it ended up as a penalty because it looked to me as if the, the certainly the first um foul was outside of the the, the large parallelogram. So you know when I saw the penalty being awarded I was expecting the, the black card to be shown. Um, you know, so it, 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 they probably feel a wee bit aggrieved about that about that as well. Um, but look, they look they um they played very well um in large parts you know they moved the ball very well um you know Shear shall know this as well you know look Antrim are very good up front um very very capable up front I would argue that they definitely have a McCarthy Cup forward line um you know I think they possibly have a bit more work to do it at at, at the back you know even if you look at the McDonough Cup games teams were still scoring relatively heavily against them I know with the day that we played them. I think we scored 316, 317 from play, um, even though they won the game fairly well against us. So, you know, that would be their concern. And I think that probably came back to haunt them a wee bit in terms of, you know, Cork, I think that they end up racking up 326 or something like that in the in the end. So, you know, look, loads to build on 
um, I think Darren Gleeson has done a fantastic job there in, in, um, in Antrim. You know, hopefully Darren will stay on um, because I think continuity is very important for that group of, of, of Antrim players at the moment. Massive commitment, of course, coming up the road and travelling up the road and you know, Darren's a young family, etc. Um, but I do think he has done a great job there. I think Antrim will be very pleased with the game in general. Disappointed, I suppose, with the, maybe the, the, the final result but I think they had an awful lot to be very, very happy with, not just in terms of the season in general, but also on Saturday in terms of their competitiveness. And, you know, nobody is going to enjoy going to Cardigan next year, either in the league or the McCarthy Cup, because um, Antrim have certainly proven this year and indeed last year that they're a match for anyone on their on their day in Corrigan Park. Saoirse, you would have <clears throat> went up to Corrigan Park um, with Wexford, Last year, like I suppose we all know at this stage how difficult is it, it is up there to get a result. Yeah, no, Ron hit the nail on the head about the, the venue up there. It's actually a fantastic venue to go and play. Exceptionally hostile, and I said this to, to Tony Chivers actually during the week about how it's a great asset to have when when, when you're actually going to your home venue. But as, as Ron knows, the, the surface up there is really good. You know, it's a really good surface, a lovely tight ground, leads to a fantastic atmosphere and like for all intents and purposes, I don't think anyone in mind me saying this. I think Antrim are the early McCarthy team, being honest, like the, the, you know, and, and I suppose the proof of pudding is, you know, they, they won all their games at John McDonough. And again, were quite competitive last Saturday. They watched the first half before I had to head to Dublin for a league game. Um, and, you know, to was nip and talk. And I was listening to going up the road. And I think the, the scoreline flattered, and even Kieran Kingston said it, scoreline flattered, flattered Cork in the end, to be fair. They're an exceptionally uh, competitive team. And I said, I was up there last year at Wexford. And it's a really tough place to go and play. And I don't think any team in the, the Liam McCarthy next year will, will, will really relish going to Corrigan Park because it's a really hard place to, to get out of. And that's not taking anything away from... And they're actually a very, very good side wherever they play. They've, as as Ronan said, they're going forward. There's some fantastic hurlers, like you know. So, wherever they play, they're going to be a handful. But I just think at, at home in Corrigan Park next year, um, they're going to be very, very difficult to get results off of. And, and Willie, what what did you make of the um, core performance overall? I think that they probably struggled, but a lot of the factors the guys spoke about, Ronan and 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 Church talking about the the tight space, the I suppose the the big journey up, the expectation of Cork, uh, going up there and all, we're, the, the, the the whole country saying they're, they're going to win it well. So I I think the, all that fed into a you know Antrim very very competitive uh, after obviously that tough game the week before in Crow Park, and I think look Cork will be happy to get out of there with their lives. I suppose a Sir Sir would attest to in National League games of Wexford and Clare gone up there as well in the, in the last while and, and Antrim being unbelievably competitive and winning a strong game so I think look Cork just, just just move on everything is on this weekend now with Galway but I think look it's a it's a it's a tough place to go Antrim will be happy after the year uh, albeit I suppose it, it got very hairy as and we spoke about it last week in Crow Park against Kerry when they, when, when Kerry did score heavily but I think look Darren Leeson management team will be, will, 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 will be happy they've won it they've been competitive in the I suppose in the in, in the preliminary quarter final and it's about building on next year and trying to I suppose become even more competitive just the point I'd like to was pick up on with Ron, and, and I, it was uh, it was very interesting. I think the importance of hurling being moved to both Belfast and other areas around yeah. the country. I think there's this huge opportunity to, to to not to grow the game, but to, to give everyone the, the opportunity to, to 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 see hurling of that level live in in their area. And like again, being in in Crow Park last week for the McDonough and the the Leinster final, like it was ridiculous as I was guards twenty thousand people in Crow Park. It was just it was it was insane. Um, uh, to, to, to have it there when that match could have been in Port Leash and maybe even the McDonald's somewhere else and, and try to get that big crowd and you know we, we've seen it in the Munster Championship this year like in Welsh Park being full Ennis being full big crowd in Turles for the Munster final like again just uh, the opportunity for the decision makers within hurling and I suppose football throughout the country to to, to, to bring these games to, to, to regional venues and, and I suppose the, the expectation in Belfast then to get casement built and get it done and, and, and allow fixtures like this to, to, to go ahead I think that that, that that can't be underestimated and just I think it's important probably for us to discuss it as well that it's it's it, hurling needs to be to be pushed towards hurling people and, uh, and not in again Crow Park where 20,000 people looks like it's empty how important do you think that is in Belfast, Roman? So look, it's look, well, it's not just Belfast. You know, I think I think people people sometimes 
you know, look, it's massively important in Belfast, massively important in Ulster. But it's not just for us, like, you know, there's massive pockets of, of diehard hurling people in Kildare and in Meath and in, mm. you know, Carlo and in Westmeath and, and in Kerry and all, you know, the, the, like, those are the kind of pockets of people where, you know, those people are as passionate about hurling as, as Tipperary or Cork or Galway or whatever, maybe not as many of them. But they love their hurling, and like I would agree with Wally. I I was actually down at the the Leinster final last 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 weekend. I had my wee man with me as well, like, and you know, okay, like he was probably more excited on Saturday because Cork were playing, and and you know, Cork were staying in the Canal Court, so we met them that morning and all of that. But you know, he even turned around on the way on the on the on the way home from Dublin last week, and he said, "Wasn't very exciting, Daddy, was it? You know, because there was no real buzz, you know, uh, in, in Croke Park at all." The following week, and you know, like, look, you compare that to this Saturday with the quarterfinals, and and what's going to be a packed thurless, you know, and the atmosphere and the and the buzz and the excitement, you know. But like, you know, if if we take in the Leinster final, for example, the Tullamore, you'd taken it to kind of Port Leash and packed it out or whatever. Like the atmosphere would be far better, you know. Um, there'd have been great kind of, you know, even in terms of the economic benefits for a town like Port Leash or a town like Tullamore or whatever. But, you know, there is there is a serious question to be asked as to why we're fixated with playing some games in Croke Park when, you know, there's no crowds there at all. You know, in the football, even this weekend, you know, our, our last weekend was a, was a prime example as well, like empty sta- stands and, and no atmosphere. But in terms of, you know, the importance of those kind of games coming to, to Ulster or coming to venues, it's massive. You know, I think back to when Slack Neil played um, Bally Hale in, in Newry Shamrocks there um, in Park Esther a couple of years ago and the place was packed absolutely packed and more importantly after the match the pitch was packed with kids on the pitch getting photographs getting autographs you know and Michael Fenley and TJ and Henry staying on for an hour or more signing things the same on Saturday you know and I'd be good friends with, with Damon O'Sullivan Sully and um, we were just talking he, he said to me before and he says I suppose it'll be it'll be it'll be half four before we get off this pitch, you know. But he was joking about it, but but it was almost kind of half four by the time they got off the pitch. You know, Pat Horgan was there the whole time, never never you know turned away a single kid. And the pitch, and I actually put it up on social media. I just put up a thing saying you know things you love to see, and the pitch was just packed with kids getting their autographs and getting their hurlies signed and and stuff. And that can't be underestimated in terms of you know, inspiring the next generation, you know, and like my own club, we won the intermediate hurling here down last year and went up, went up and are up senior this year. But that whole team or the basis of that whole team, bar the outfit, like myself and goals, are lads that we had at under seven, under eight, under nine, that we took all over Ireland. We took down the Tipperary to, to watch in Thurless. We took them down to Croke Park or whatever. And we never lost any of those players. So never underestimate, Paul, as Willie says, the importance of bringing these matches to the people, letting the people see the stars and inspiring the next generation. It's absolutely massive for Hurland. And, you know, when you look around that kind of eastern seaboard, you know, the, the Kildares, the Meaves, the areas, the Wicklows who are massively underperforming, where there are population areas that the GEA should be all over in terms of the growth of Hurland. You know, we need to be inspiring those young people instead of letting them drift off either to other sports or to nothing at all. And I suppose that is a point. <clears throat> Seriously, with the with the venues this year, like it has been a real issue because even the atmosphere we're probably going to see this weekend and what we've seen in the Munster final, um, it's totally different to what we have seen in Crow Park this year. Yeah, I suppose while I'd agree with what the boys are saying, I think it's probably important to counteract it with that if, if there's a Kilkenny Wexford Leinster final like it was yeah. a few years ago, I, you know, you definitely have 50,000 plus there. But I think, l- like you said, uh, you know, with all due respect to the Gala, the lads, they don't seem to travel in as big numbers this early in the year. So they, they, it would be nice maybe to look at regionalising the final a small bit. But again, you know, there doesn't have to be any, I suppose, call made until you know who's in the final. But if you wait up, I suppose, watching the, the Leinster final on the Saturday evening and then been lucky enough to be in Turles on the, the Sunday, just chalk and cheese, atmosphere wise, and everything. So it's a huge help. And as, as the lads said here, like you'll have a packed house in Turles this Saturday again for two fantastic quarterfinals. Um, and this was just touching on something that Ronan said there, been involved with me this year. I was surprised, if you like, the amount that said the Mead lads that would have been travelled down to watch the the league final. Um, 
with water and cork and also led to around to me to try and maybe get tickets for the Munster final and there are very passionate hurling people as Ronan said around the country and it's important to look after these people as well and um, just suppose we need to do what we can to promote the game and I would use the word promote the game because I think at times I have no problem saying it we're sort of in the shadow of football at times and you seem to have a lot of the people and a lot of powers of be seem to be football people and you know, dare I say, there's a bit of lip service paid to, to hurling at, at times from the top. And I just think it's very, very important to promote for me what's the greatest game on the planet like. And we need to look after that and nurture it. Um, and even above this year, playing down the last round of the John McDonough, to see the passion of people above in the Arts Peninsula, my first time ever up there. Um, and it just, it's just fantastic to see that in this little pocket of, of Ireland, your people were so interested in the game. Um, and I think at times we probably, as an association, don't do enough for those small pockets, you know, a bit of lip service here and there and every now and again where there's something fired at him that maybe there's maybe a bit of funding or maybe there's a few bodies put in there or whatever it is to try and promote the game. But sometimes I wonder, do we actually do enough out and out work to really try and grow the game and promote it? Because I think as Ronan said it there, you've, like I see there in me this year, you've huge big populations that, you know, where we haven't tapped into yet. You know, you have these pockets everywhere, but there are certainly, I suppose, urban areas that that are big areas that, that we could be tapping into a little bit more because a lot of the people are probably the current generation there or maybe probably their parents are kind of, I suppose, traditionally maybe from Portland areas and we're probably not quite doing enough as an association to tap into that and to try and promote and go to the game. And again, the Joe McDonough is a fantastic competition with an unbelievable, you know, there's been some fantastic games in it. And again, at times, it doesn't seem to get maybe the promotion that, say, if you look at the, there's a bit of a hullabaloo about the Talchin Cup and there's a big push on with that. And for me, this was this is my first time ever seeing the John McDonough first hand. Um, and now, albeit, this was me, we were, a little, you know, we were a little bit off the pace this year, but definitely some of the other results and some of the other teams and stuff like that, there probably wasn't enough made of it, you know, compared with the, the fuss that's been created around the the Talchin Cup so it's it's look I think we have a lot to do maybe at times going forward to look at how we can grow the game of hurling Paul you know yeah there's just something I want to touch on here um, from the Wexford Kerry game at the weekend there's been a lot of frustration I suppose from Wexford and Kerry supporters that maybe the game wasn't let flow enough and it, it's something we've seen this year across the board Willie and I'm sure you've seen it at club level the, the the inconsistent uh, inconsistency like levels of the tackle in hurling it's it's there's it just doesn't seem to be defined and some refs are letting it flow and some aren't. Yeah, I think that's the, it's a, it's a big issue and like again I suppose referencing the monster final Leinster final and being at both the weekend last and it just it was chalk and cheese as regards mm-hmm. what. Uh, uh, John Keane on the on the on the Sunday and and what happened on the Saturday night. So yeah, I, I think it's and it's actually interesting as regards as as we discuss it and as 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 we all discuss it in our communities and clubs and everywhere else. Like we all long for the John Keenan approach as regards, and we all long for the, and it creating that excitement and like again. It, it, it didn't help on Saturday night on the, in the Leinster final that everything was being blown or or, or, or taken back. Or it, I look, it's chalk and cheese. It, it is a it's a it's a bugbearer of all of us, I suppose, as regards uh, uh, and, and and Johnny Murphy being sent front and centre as regards being in that match again on on in Wexford and and Kerry. So it's very frustrating. Uh, we all long, as I said, to, to to see the game flow, to see I suppose just just not to be. We all know a bad stroke. We all know a, a bad tackle. We all know, like, it, the days of, of, of lads being in corners and getting the heads cut off them or getting abused off the mm. ball physically is, is gone because the game doesn't allow that anymore. So uh, these technical fouls, uh, I, I don't know, I, I just get very frustrated when, when guys are trying to, I suppose, tackle properly and try to, and then being pulled for something, you know, silly, a little tap or a little this or that. We all know bad stroke. And I think that's the, that's the game and the nature of the man of hurling and the honesty of which we all play and I suppose the code we abide by now uh, where probably maybe in previous years that wasn't there with, as I said with psychopaths uh, uh, you know with, with bad strokes and, 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 and that allowed being get away so I think yes to, to answer your to answer your point we're all frustrated uh, the game has been is been reft by uh, 
I suppose that, that analysis and then we look at the clear situation as regards with two guys down uh, potentially for, for the next day. like that's absolutely insane when we were all raving about how great a game it was and mm. how intense it was and like I can remember even watching the first couple of minutes of the Munster final and going jeez this, this is brilliant as regards but waiting for the referee to blow the whistle and he didn't and I kind of went God, isn't that brilliant? Is there, like, you were, you were, the, the, first, the first play of the game was just tackle, tackle, hit, tackle. And there was, not, there was nothing cynical. Guys were just trying to get in around the ball, trying to win the ball, trying to create, I suppose, a, a, you know, a template or a, a platform for attack. But we, we loved it. And, and, and that's the, I suppose that's my uh, frustration. And I, I, I assume that the guys are the same, that you know, we want the game ref like John Keane or even Fergal Horgan in, in, in the last couple of years. Just let it flow. If it's a bad stroke, call it. If it's a bad tackle, call it but don't don't be trying to I suppose soccerize it or, or or make it into something that it's not when when it's not look the game is in a brilliant place but I just think that has to be tidied up and just a more feel from referees on on, on certain tackles I think would be better Paul just 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 a point there to, to I suppose reiterate what Willie is saying it's exceptionally frustrating and like I've probably been the wrong side of referees more times than not every year but what I will say is, and I met John Keane actually coming out of Thurless, I, I was saying to him well he did it hot, is to be fair to referees, and I said I give out about it enough, but they're under the spotlight so much, and they're yeah. going back in on a Monday night, and they're being analysed today, first of all by their yeah. assessors, who have probably haven't ref for a long, long time. Secondly, for me, like to carry on the Sunday game, and I said I'm a Limerick man, I don't want to see any of those clear leads out, because as he said, it was a men's game that day, it was a fantastic game, there was no one killed, Couple of I suppose wild strokes are right, but again you get on with it. But you ask anyone, and this is the this is the big problem I think for for GA people or hurling people. Do they want to see the Munster final this year? Do they want to see the Leinster final? And if you want to see the Munster final, well then you can't be over analysing some of the stuff that goes on. And for me, a lot of these pundits, this was no more than what we we're doing talking about the game and stuff here today, Paul. But a lot of the stuff that was being talked about on the Saturday night and the Sunday night, it just drives me bananas because a lot of times it's people trying to justify maybe why they're there and talking about a game and like you're overanalyzing it for me you, you can't overanalyze what happened on, on, on the Munster finals basically to the game to on life its own it was managed brilliantly by John Keenan and I don't think anyone Limerick or Clare there would realistically if they know anything about Hurland would be looking for either sets of players to be retrospectively suspended super game of Hurland we move on to the next game and my worry now is that you're going to see two quarter finals next Sunday or next Saturday being ref to date again Again, to be fair to referees, because they yeah. probably sat in the room last Monday, got absolutely chewed out of it because they maybe didn't blow enough or whatever it is. And that's the worry I have. You've gone from one super game this year, and are you going to have two games where refs are given 60, 70, 80 frees again, again next Saturday and ruin mm-hmm. everything, you know? And again, the last thing I'd say on it is I hear some people from other sports say that maybe it's time for VAR in Hurling or this video system referees. And I was talking to men recently who uh, would be kind of more of a rugby background. And he said about the excitement it adds to rugby, the video referee. And I was kind of politely saying to him, well, if you're going to depend on video decisions to add excitement to a game, for me, it's not a game. Like, you mean, for me, you'd, you'd 80, 80 plus minutes of excitement in a Munster final that you don't need to be hanging around for what it else. And that's my worry that will referees be taught, listen, what happened in the Munster final, because there was so much media scrutiny, we have to go back to blowing for everything. And that's the worry I have for Saturday and for the rest of the championship, you know? Yeah, and I just sorry on that as well. The technology piece, like the technology not working in Crow Park, the slowness of the technology in, in yeah. Turles, you're kind of going like this is you know the, the age we're living in, the technology that's yeah. available. Just how can it not be got right? And if that was a big decision yeah. in that answer final, which it turned out it wasn't, like you know, yeah. the, the, it's 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 crazy stuff. Like, and I, I, I just think, look, if we're going using technology, as Sarah said there, get it right. We don't we, we, we don't need it all the time, we don't we don't need yeah. it, but at the same time, the point of the Monday night these referees being assessed to death that is yeah. that is the issue and and, and it's, it's 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 not their fault and that's the that's the piece they're trying to do the thing the letter of the law and uh not kind of use their own like john keenan or as i said a reference fergal horgan there use their own uh, but they're getting chewed to death on the monday night and, and yeah. that, that's the big yeah. issue here yeah and uh, like consistency is the massive point. like well he made the right point there consistency like all that's all players want you know we and, it, and he's right we all know the bad stroke you know, hurl, hurl, you know, most hurling people when they go out to the referee, they just want you to, you know, to 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 pull the ball, the the the, the bad stroke, blow that one, but let the game flow outside of that. You know, we all know what we're getting into when we step across the white line. You know, whether, whether as a manager or, or or indeed as a player. But the consistency point. I'll give you a prime example of it. We played Kerry in the in the McDonough Cup, 
And I think our Paul scored maybe 14 or 15 points from freeze. And Shane Conway got 11 or 12 or whatever the case may be. And we went the following week and played Antrim. And I think we had four frees. John Keenan refereed it. Now, I think there was four frees to us and maybe something similar to Antrim in, the, in, in, in terms of scorable frees. But before that game, John came over to both me and Darren Gleeson separately and he kind of said, look, lads, you know the way I'm going to referee it. You know, if there's, if there's a bad stroke, I'll be, I'll be blowing the whistle. If not, we'll be getting on of it. And you knew exactly where you stood at the start of the game. But, you know, to Willie's point, it's not the, it's not the referees. They're being told, you know, and, and the prime example of it is the hand pass. You know, whereby you're seeing referees blowing, the same referees one week blowing hand pass after hand pass after hand pass after hand pass, and then two weeks later not blowing it. And you're kind of saying, there's nothing different. And shit, you know what? We all, we're all coaching teams, and you're coaching guys to tackle and be intense in the tackle and, you know, to, 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 to use their body. And then they're sitting and they're getting blown up for this, and they're looking over to the sideline, kind of saying, you know, what's going on? Why is he blowing up? You know, this is exactly what we've been, you know. So it, it's it's incredibly frustrating, and I think look, just let them get on with it. Um, but you know the guys that are on the telly, you know, to be fair to them, you've got a job there to do. But you know, part of that job is hurling people is not to be hanging out other hurlers to drive. And I think there was a wee bit of that last week, which I didn't think was called for. Like you know, there's no, you know, there's, you know, they're they're, they're almost at times looking for something to talk about. You know, to be fair to Shimmy Flanagan, you know. He didn't make any fuss about the slap. Yeah. yeah. Not a single, you know, like, 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 you know, the one man that got the slap, as you say, might be justified to be yapping or whatever else, but Shimmy yeah. Flanagan, you know, and people can talk about, you know, uh, Limerick are, 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 you know, are, are aggressive or strong. Yeah, but they play it both ways. You don't see any of them going down yapping or crying or whatever else, you know, they play the game the way it should be played, you know, um, and, you know, this kind of stuff about saying, oh, you know, they can be, you know, they're playing. They're playing as hard as they possibly can within the confines of the rules. There's nothing wrong with that. They're doing exactly what anybody else should be. Or sorry, and if you're not doing it, then you should be having a look at yourself. Simple as that. Just on that point, uh, with uh, Rona made there really um, <clears throat> about John Keane, the referee coming over speaking to managers. That's really something that needs to happen across the board, like because uh, at least then you know what you're dealing with. A hundred percent. I like. I, I think the communication and and again, uh, like you, you see it in other sports, and not that not, not not that we need it, but just that level of communication and 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 the game is totally different to we'll say a rugby where they, like you know the, the the common narrative out there is that oh isn't it great that the referee is controlled and he's talking to the player? Yeah, that's that's much easier because you have two straight lines of people within twenty yards of each other. You can see everything. You can talk. You don't you don't have to go on a much much vaster uh, pitch to to see what's happening in a certain corner. So that it's and, and the game is so much quicker. So it's. Uh, I think communication is a really, really big thing. Interestingly, I can remember meeting John Keenan at a 2013 minor match in Kilkenny. Uh, Wexford, uh, Connor McDonald was minor with uh, with Wexford and uh, Wexford won. And I can remember the Kilkenny guys in front of us going absolutely mental as regards with John. He was pulling all the, those those types of frees and uh, it's just amazing how we how much he's changed in in, in in that period of time and and again fair 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 play to him but I think the communication piece is is really interesting a lot of referees are they're very slow to communicate with managers or backroom teams or players because they don't they don't want to compromise themselves or seem to be comp- which is which is a crazy situation when they're so vital to uh to to, to actually what's what's happening on the field so I think yeah the communication piece is massive. Uh, but again, I, I think that, that 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 takes a huge amount of confidence within a, from a referee and uh, and and the management selectors and, and backroom team. But I think that that that, in my opinion, it should be built into before matches. Have a quick chat with both managers together and say, look, guys, this is this is what we're going to do today. This is this is what I expect from you, and just try to create that two way communication. That because that's again, we've all been on sidelines, and and, and Sirius has referenced it there. We're all the same as regards. We all we all get excited because we're so invested in what we're doing, and we don't we don't you know we just don't we, we feel that it's a slight against us if if all, all if the decisions keep going against us and that. But I think a communication can help us as 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 management teams, but also as referees. And also players then as well. That there's nothing as bad as a referee kind of ignoring a player or or, or being smart with a player yeah. or so, you know just that drives people 
crazy. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that that's where the issue is. So uh, to take up your point on a, on a bigger scale, I, I just think the communication piece is, is massive between everybody. And that takes the confidence. And I, I, I don't think that confidence is there yet from referees. But, uh, uh, you know, give respect, get respect, I think is what, what was the slogan a couple of years. And like it was, uh, I, I felt and look, I was guilty as anyone. I was guilty of of, of not showing respect, but it, it, it was a two way thing. And I think to, to 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 bridge that gap would be a really really big thing in in refereeing our games. Because the, the one thing just to come in there, Paul, um, <clears throat> we're looking at the club here at home in, in Brough. Georgie Clancy is very heavily involved with us, and Georgie is a recently retired international rugby ref. And the one big thing that I'd often be picking his brain. The one thing that I think is hugely uh, beneficial is maybe I think it's the day before a game that he, both managers or head coach, whatever, will have a chat with the referee, that they'll meet up and they'll go over everything, what he's looking for, maybe from the players to follow now, if there's particular things they need to focus on. And that's certainly something that, as Willie and Ronan said, the, the lines of communication are important. And this this give respect, get respect is definitely a two-way thing because I do see that sometimes refs, and I understand why they get sh- sharp, maybe it's smart with players, but that drives players ma- gag at times as well when they're, when they're trying to be a bit smart with players. But I just think that, you know, I, I reference maybe things I wouldn't maybe take from other sports a while ago. But, you know, I think it maybe is if you had some sort of a situation where both managers and your referee can be going to room for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, have a chat over things, just iron a few things out. I think it certainly would go a long way maybe to maybe aid in the inconsistencies that we see maybe from, from game to game, you know. Just on the... Rory Hayes and Peter Duggan, they look like they could be suspended. Keenan Fahey looks like he's going to be suspended for two games. <clears throat> the frustration, I suppose, for all hurling people here across the country is that these moments in a game are being highlighted, but there's going to be numerous other games where there's going to be incidents like this not highlighted. Yeah, uh, that's your ask me, Paul, is it? Yeah. Yeah, no, I suppose that's. I think we really mentioned it a while ago, but this was the soccerization. What I, I've said it, and my father said it for the last number of months, is they're sanitizing the game, like, and you can't even things like the technology. Listen, we all we don't want big calls to be gotten wrong, but over the course of anyone's career playing and coaching, you'd like to think that all these things balance themselves out. And for me, the beauty of sport is that little bit of the unknown or the, the human error that happens with referees. And if you try and sanitize it too much, and if it's analyzed to date, like, where do you stop? I mean, are you going to start looking at maybe frees that weren't given that could have led to scores or, you know, if a, if a free in, in another, and this is another issue, you've VAR in Turles, or sorry, you've Hawkeye in Turles and Club Park and Oakland Celts. You've games being run with the same competitions that don't have the same sort of like, resources, if you like, uh, which is an inconsistency in itself. But for me, if, if you start overanalyzing anything, it's a very, very dangerous road to go down with it. Where do you stop? Like, what kind of analysis will be done this weekend? Uh, Willie or Ronan said it earlier look there was plenty of stuff I suppose no one gets killed anymore the notion of Hell's Kitchen and all that is long long gone uh, no one's going to get badly hurt and if they are I mean they should be dealt with um, correctly but like you know as the lad said there I mean Seamus Flanagan the one guy that probably should be complaining about the slap just walked away um, and I wouldn't ex- I would expect nothing more from him and like I said even as a limited person the last thing you want is to see maybe Peter Duggan and Rory Hayes suspended for this weekend um, and it, my worry is it's the tin end of the wage. Where do you stop with the sort of retrospective looking at things? Um, you know, and that's you're on a slippery slope, I think, Paul. That you could start analysing and over analysing everything, and it could ruin the game, you know. Yeah, really good. But he's hoping that the two games this weekend can lead um, to two crackers. I suppose the first one we'll look at in Terrace on Saturday at 1 45, um, go at Cork. Um, Ronan, it's it's kind of really hard to know where both of these teams are at. Yeah, look, I suppose it, you know you wouldn't be. It's very very hard to predict. Um, you know, Cork clearly, um, Cork clearly, you know, have got on a bit of a run. Um, you know, played well, very much so against against Waterford. Um, you know, played well against Tipperary. You could argue, you know, how lifeless were Tipperary. I think that's a different debate altogether. Around it, you know, and, and did what they needed to do in, in Corrigan Park to, to 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 win, um, you know, so coming into the coming into the game against Galway, probably, you know, do we know an awful lot more about this Cork team than we did five six weeks ago? I'm not sure we do. We know they're very good up front. We know they can really hurt you if you're going to give them time and space. 
um, are we sure that you know a good aggressive skillful full forward like Connor Whelan won't cause them oceans of trouble well you know I think there's a big big question mark on that one you know I think that's definitely still 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 a question mark hanging over that Cork team you know so you know Cork you know this is a massive game for them there's no doubt in terms of the development of this team you know I think if they if they get over this game on 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 on, on Saturday it'd be a big big tick in the box on the flip side you know um, Willie was I don't know if Sears was in the match but Willie certainly was because I heard him saying about the Leinster final I thought Galway were awful in the Leinster mm. final you know they just they, they just looked and, and you know they look like they look like a team that actually had over analysed things and were playing a zero kind of freedom and, and, and had gone out of a particular kind of game plan and stuck so rigidly to it that it stopped them from hurling with any kind of abandon or abandonment or freedom at all and um, and the game itself, the Leinster final, was really poor to watch. It was, you know, it wasn't a good game of, of hurling. That you know, like you could say, oh, it was there was tough tackling or there was good, good hard hits, but there was good hard hits and plenty of them in the Munster final. But it was far more flowing game, and you know, it was stop start, and, and you're still wondering to yourself, what's the real Galway? You know, the the team that played in Salt Hill or the team that showed up in 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 um in in Dublin now. As the boys will know, the danger of Galway is there's always at least one big, big performance out of them, you know, and that could very much be on on Saturday, you know, and they could come out all guns blazing and do what only Galway do and, you know, produce a performance for the ages on, on Saturday and win that match, you know, and, 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 and that's the kind of probably frustrating thing if you're a Galway fan is, you know, which Galway team is going to turn up on Saturday. Um, but because of that, you know, it's very, very hard to predict, Paul, who's going to win because there's so many question marks around both teams. In my opinion, it's 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 a difficult one to call. You know, my heart probably says Cork, but that's only my bias showing through as opposed to anything else. Um, but if I was being very rational and looking at it logically, I'm not sure I could call it because I'm not sure I know what, I'm not sure either of the two teams have shown a consistent being of form for us to turn around and say, yes, they definitely will win. Or no, they definitely won't. I think both teams have loads to recommend them, but they also have loads to kind of work on and loads of issues that I'm not sure either of the two teams have answered. Yeah, like Willie, you were obviously at the Leinster final. Galway were really poor, um, and Cork, while they got the job done, racked up three twenty-seven against Antrim. Even the way Antrim got the first goal, oceans of space, like it's there there's it's still a similar pattern with Cork, like they're still conceding high scores and and obviously with the forward line they have, they still are scoring high, but ultimately concede still conceding a lot. Yeah, and I, I, like as we, we discussed, Cork uh, at Lenter, Cork have been well discussed at this stage. Uh, the All Ireland final absolutely ripped asunder. Uh, the league final against Waterford ripped asunder. Uh, the first round against Limerick in Cork ripped asunder. Uh, like the, you know, the, against Clare inside in Turles, then the week after that ripped asunder. Like they're they're when the real pressure comes on, and and, and we know that when trophies are being handed out, quarter final, semi final, final stage. Uh, they haven't come up to it. So unless that trend changes, uh, Cork, you know, they, they they could pull a performance out of the weekend. But again, uh, when the real pressure is on, will, will they come up to it? I don't know. Unbelievably disappointed with Galway last week. They were they were just devoid of ideas. Kilkenny worked the ball in fairness to them very well. Went short, went across the field, went you know. But like Kilkenny are you know skillful team, really really good in the close quarters. They're probably underestimated how how good their hurling is, you know. And, and we're comparing them again to, to teams of ten and fifteen years ago when they were winning all Ireland by cricket scores. Like they're still a good team, like you know. So uh, with TJ Reid, like you know, ball being poked down top from free over the bar. Like it was it was a uh, it was very dour. It was very. Uh, I think Galway show were kind of devoid of ideas. They didn't, they didn't, they, they didn't really know or how to 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 to, to win the game. And when I said when the pressure came on, saying that Paul Murphy pulled off two brilliant saves at the start. If if they had to 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 score there, that might have uh, allowed them to get into that state of flow and uh, which they never reached at all. So this weekend is look, it it it, it, it is very interesting. But I, I I think the form line with Cork, yeah, good win against Tip, good win against Waterford. 
good win against uh, Antrim after a struggle the weekend. Yeah, they're, 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 they're heading places, but will they really come up to it when the pressure comes on this weekend? Or God forbid, if they win the, in the semi-final, I don't know, and I'm, and I'm unconvinced. But at the same time, it's a, uh, it's yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky one to call, as Ro- as Ronan said. Uh, Galway's form has been, you know, has been has been relatively poor as regards uh, drawing in Wexford. Uh, yes, beating Dublin. Yes, beating Kilkenny by a point. But as that Leinster final, uh, Henry and his manager team will not be happy. So maybe there's a there's a kick in them. Uh, I think probably Henry's a lot to, uh, has a big stick to, to to beat Galway at the moment because they were so poor and they 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 they, they, they let they let him down the weekend uh, the Leinster final. So it's uh, to see. What, what's in them and uh, yeah again I'll go uh, I'm going to go for Galway but at the same time I think uh, Cork you know just you, you just don't know and that's uh, and, and, and that's my, and that, that, that's very been very honest about the thing Sierra would you expect Galway to make wholesale changes this weekend first of all <clears throat> Rona kind of took the words I remote at the start because I said I was kind of debating this with some of the questions that come up today, Paul. And the last day I put my neck on the line, I expected a kick from, from Cork against Clare and it didn't come. So, uh, and I actually, I'm like, I can't actually call this one because, again, I'm probably expecting that kick from Galway. And to answer your question, oh, it's very hard to know what a manager will do or what, what's going on in the setup. But I suppose my feeling is that there mightn't be wholesale changes. They might say, lads, listen, you kind of left us down. You didn't perform the last day. You're getting a chance to go and perform, and I, I think that maybe, as Wheelie said, every time Cork have been expected to perform the last maybe two years, or they haven't done that, um, and I am expecting Galway to come out with some bit of a performance, you know, to, to, to better what they did in the, the Leinster final. And listen, <clears throat> I'm not taking anything away from the Kilkenny performance, but Galway were very, very, it was, it was abject now watching, and I, didn't, I wasn't there watching it live, but watching television, they looked quite poor, and they looked kind of bereft of ideas, really, and you know, when, when kind of plan A seemed to falter, they, they seemed to struggle big time. Um, geez, could I call it, it? It's a very, very hard one to call. I, I would probably marginally, if you look at both sets of forwards and maybe both sets of backs, my question is, is Ronan says, who really in that Cork full back is going to hold um, Connor Whelan? And if those guys get a run in you, they, they can go to town you. And I, I look, I've been under receiving in the Galva. Hidens in the last couple of years at times when they do hit form they, they can score at will from anywhere um, likewise you have a couple of the Cork lads the likes of Alan Conley and these guys finding form as well at the other side of the field so to answer your question this wasn't around the way do I expect massive changes probably not um, there might be one or two and it's just maybe could depend on if there's a suspension for uh, Kulin Fahey and that I suppose if I had to, I, it's very hard to call. I, I think on the basis of a poor performance the last day, which left me down in my prediction the last time, <laughs> I, I'm expecting something maybe from Galway, to be honest. Um, again, more or less based on what Willie said as well, that when Cork have had to perform the last couple of years, they, they kind of haven't. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. I suppose we'll probably marginally keep Galway. Ronan, with your Cork hat on you, do you think Patrick Horgan is going to continue that super sub role? Um, I suppose <laughs> super sub role is an interesting one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how he sees himself in that in that in that light. Um, yeah. Look, I I would be surprised if I saw him back in the start against against Galway. To be honest, um, I think Tim O'Mahony gives them a different option up there, so to speak. Um, I think you know. Now the one thing that that uh, that not starting Hoggy brings into question is you know you move from probably a ninety five percent free taker to an eighty five percent free taker in terms of you know Connor's still a very good free taker but you know if a game becomes a, a free fest um there, there's a danger of not having Hoggy on the field um I think bringing him on with 20, 25 minutes to go you know what you know if Cork are in the game you know there'll be a massive buzz from the crowd there's a big impact for you know on on the back of that and in many ways you know um as a management team you make that call based on do you think you'll get it out of the player when he comes on because some players you know just just don't react to not starting you know they just you know it just it just doesn't sit well with them uh, but if you can convince a player of the quality and caliber of Patrick Horgan that you know you want him on that field effectively 
as the matador at the end of the game to kill the match, you know, and there's a great story told about Brian Gavin, you know, talking about the matador and the fact that if you go to a bullfight, it's thankfully I don't, I don't agree with them, but if you know the way they wear down a bull, you know, they use others to wear down the bull, they use others to kind of, you know, um, tire the bull out, but the matador then walks out in the last, you know, the, 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 the dying moments and in inverted commas of the show to effectively, you know, um, provide the killing touch, you know. So, you know, could Pat, Patrick Horgan do that for Cork? Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, he he, he may find longev or further longevity in his career from doing that. Um, not for me to write as a victory as a starting player, but I would be surprised this Saturday if he starts. I think they'll probably go with Tim O'Mahony this Saturday to give them that extra option because that's the big problem Cork have, that, you know, they seem to have to work every ball through the lines and every ball out of out, out between the lines. And as the two boys will know as well, you know, we all primarily like to do that. Well, you know, most teams are trying to use the ball as best they can. But guess what? Sometimes you just have to bloody hit the ball, you know, and you just have to give it down long. And that's where kind of the likes of, of Limerick, even Galway, Connor Whelan, have that advantage because when they get the ball long, you know, even if they don't win it, they're damn sure that their forwards are working hard enough to keep it in there. That hasn't been the case for Cork for the last while. But I think, you know, having Tim inside in the full forward line potentially gives them an asset to win primary possession and to allow the Mark Coleman's and these guys in the back line sometimes just to give it long and just hit it. Um, and, you know, I think because of that, I expect that um, Cork will probably start start Tim and, 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 not, and not Patrick Horgan on Saturday. Really, on that, like, of Cork... Um working the ball short, like, during that Antrim game, you, you were nearly thinking to yourself, do Cork draw this kind of trouble on them of getting suffocated around the middle third? Because it just felt like when they were trying to work at short, it's, they just play this short game that they, they were bringing it on themselves, really. Yeah, absolutely. But I suppose Antrim ha- ha- probably had their homework done and they were going to full press on, on Cork. There were no more Cork were, were trying to do. And then... I suppose that is the difference with with the Limerick, we'll say. So if you do a full press, they're able to work the ball out over you or they're able to hit it longer. They have half forwards and uh, as Ron uh, alluded to, they have guys to stand inside to to win the ball and go along. So like, I think you saw it in the Munster final there with, with Limerick as regards they, they, they when when Clare went full press, they dropped another two defenders back for 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 shorter puckouts and, and 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 worked it out that way. And, and like it just they, they, they're overcoming the obstacle the obstacles on the field. I don't think Cork were, were able to do that. Uh, maybe maybe it's the quality of the player or, or what they're trying to do. When Antrim went full press, Cork didn't. You know they, they really struggled getting the ball out and hadn't that longer ball. And I'm not saying lamp the ball down the field. I'm just saying that longer ball that that allows you to 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 to, to get out of that of that area without having to run the ball all the time. And you know 20, 20 yard passes uh, can, can can do that. So. Uh, yeah, I, it, it, again, it will be interesting this weekend, and I, I think Thurlis, obviously, the match being there will will help Cork. Also, look, it, it, it'll it'll help Galway to, to to I suppose do what they want to do, and if, if if that's if that's you know flood that middle area, it's much harder to do that in Thurlis because it's obviously a much bigger field. It's, it's easier to do that in Corrigan Park. So the, on that point, I just I suppose go 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 back a step, and just as as uh, Ronan was talking about, do you play Hoggy or not? Do you play a ninety five percent, one hundred percent free taker, or do you pay an eighty five? Guy, wouldn't it be great if you know, like that? We, we've discussed as, as Saoirse said as well. Talk to the referees the day before or the, the morning before. Say, what are you going to do? How are you going to ref this match? The way you can make a kind of a managed decision on who you're going to play. So, if it's yeah. going to be a free fest, like what, what we saw in Crow Park last week, TJ Reid, yeah, he's the man. He's he he plays for Kenny or Hoggy plays or or, or or whoever. But wouldn't that be a great uh, way of uh, of just planning to to know I'm going to blow this, I'm going to blow that. This is what I'm going to focus on and uh, I'm going to let it go or I'm, not, I'm going to be very tight and then you can go okay it's going to be a free fest I'm going to play hoggy all day and uh, I just think it, it, it'd be a it just it just struck me there as, as again the communication piece to, to to see that but it will be uh, yeah Cork struggled you know at times working that ball out because obviously the the, the, the tighter confines and, and the way Antrim set up so that will be uh, it'll be it'll be much more interesting in Thursday to see on Sunday if that works because they're not going to go away from what they're doing as regards they do work the ball 95% of the time so it's uh yeah it's it, it, it's something they do and they're not going to change i think 
And like with Galway, I suppose the Leinster final was talked about. Is there an over reliance on Conor Whelan? Um, and now it's unsure whether Rob Downey's going to play this weekend. Obviously, coming out, coming off injured, um, against Antrim. So like it, it it's just interesting to know now how Cork are going to adapt if Downey's out. It is, and like to be fair, for me, Conor Whelan is is one of those. You know, he's up there with any top forward in the country at the moment. He's just an outstanding player. You know, he's up there with, you know, he, he's was he's got the X factor that can make something happen for Galway. Um, and that's why I suppose I'm slightly tipping Galway in the sense that, say, if Rob Downey is out, and even with Rob Downey, like sometimes when the right ball goes to, to Conor Whelan, he's almost unmarkable. It doesn't matter who's on him, you know. Uh, and I, I just, I would fear a little bit for Cork defensively that they wouldn't have the personnel that could deal with him. Uh, but again, a lot of that, like everything, it depends on the ball coming in. If he gets quick ball in, if he, if he can find space, you know, outside him, you know, when there's b- good ball going in, the lads will tell you, no defender worth his salt but will de- be able to defend against kind of good quality ball coming in against some of the, the, the forwards that are out there at the moment. So um, a lot will depend on, I suppose, how much ball they can get him for a start and then how much good ball they can get to Conor Whelan. And like I said, for my money, it doesn't, Conor Whelan is one of those guys, he doesn't have to be exceptionally good ball. He's well capable of winning, you know, kind of 50-50 ball as well. A bit like TJ Reid, he's a good pawn him. So, you know, uh, and when he gets it in, he's, you know, he's either bringing someone into play or he's getting scores. So I just think that if Rob Downey is, is out, I think his physicality, even back there, is going to be a big loss to Cork, you know. The two lads are obviously going with Galway running. Do you think Cork can pull it off? Oh, yeah, look, I think they can, you know, um, that's not to say that, that I would be absolutely, you know, surprised if Galway won, to be fair, you know, I, I do think, you know, um, there's, it's going to be incredibly tight one way or the other. Um, I just think Cork have a wee bit of momentum at the minute, you know, um, I get that maybe probably the last two games have not been the toughest of games for them, but then they've got a wee bit of momentum, they've got a wee bit of confidence. You know, um, and you know the 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 Cork crowd will will definitely travel in big numbers. You know, and mm-hmm. and when Cork are going any bit well, they definitely feed off the crowd a wee bit. You know, and, and you know the flip side of that is that you know Cork don't start well on Saturday. The crowd, their own crowd, will get on their backs, particularly around the short ball and all of this kind of stuff, etc. But I think you know Alan Connolly is developing into a very, very good forward. I think the wide open spaces in, 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 in Thurless will will definitely will definitely suit the likes of him. I think if Cork can, you know, strike form up front and it becomes a, a let's call it a shootout, then I think, you know, Cork have the, the, the forwards to win a shootout. I think the challenge will be that if Galway can, you know, um make it more of a battle around the middle third, then Cork may struggle. But look, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my optimism. I'm gonna go for kind of uh, Cork. You know, I've already kind of put myself in the bad books with my wee man here by kind of saying that Hoggy might start. He probably might want to get into the car in Newry on Saturday if I told him that and before we travel. Um, but yeah, look, I'll 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 go for Cork. But the reality is, I think there's nothing there's nothing between the two teams to be honest. Next quarter final, uh, Clare and Wexford at uh, three forty five. Um, Tisha. Obviously, previously being involved with Wexford, um, these sides are so used to each other. I think it's the third year in a row they're facing in championship um, with this quarterfinal coming up. Yeah, um, it's, it's a very hard one to call. I suppose most people are probably looking at the performance of Clare the last day and probably you know saying that they're, they're, they're strong favourites for the game. I wouldn't be so sure. Uh, I suppose I think Limerick are that bit ahead of everyone and I think on any given day then the other teams despite the, the, the level that Clare got to the last day um, you know any of the other teams kind of beat each other on any given day uh, I would say if Clare can get to anywhere near the level they did against Limerick I think they will win the game but it's how they react to, to maybe throwing everything at Limerick and just coming up short will probably di- dictate how they actually go on Saturday now having said that I think they've gotten so close to Limerick um, I think they will be very, very motivated to try and have another crack at Limerick down the track. Um, but I'm just saying, a lot of averages towards year in the row. Is there enough between Clare and Wexford to say that Clare will knock Wexford out three years in a row? I'm not so sure. I, a, I just have a funny feeling that, that it, it could be Wexford's turn this year to, to, to sneak away. And I think it'll be tight enough. I think the game last week for 
Wexford have done with the power of good. I mean, they, they eased through the game against Clare. They got, you know, a, put up or against Kerry, put up a big score. I think it sets them up nicely because, again, they're going to go in as underdogs after the Clare performance the last day. And I'm just saying, I suppose, I think if Clare can, can reach the same level as they did against Limerick, I think they'll win the game. But I think if they're anyway off that, I actually fancy Wexford to probably just sneak it. As I said, purely in the grounds that I don't think there's enough between the sides to say that, you know, that they'll be beaten three years in a row by Clare. Just from being with Wexford, um, Damien Rex seems to be the go-to man maker this year. He's he's been a player that's been one of uh, Wexford's best defenders this year. So should, I presume it doesn't come as a surprise to you. No, he, to be fair to Damien, he's a, he's a super hurler. Um, and he's the one you want Damien. You know yourself if you're a man marker and stuff like that. You have to have an off lot of pace. Um, and he's you know he's good feet. He's he's well able to keep up with a guy. He's disciplined enough in the tackle as well. Um, uh, but. Leaving all that aside, even when he made his debut, I think it was against Kilkenny in that league quarter final in 17, right? He was a young lad, he came on um, and he started exceptionally well. And he's just, he's a really, really good ball player, you know, a fantastic hurler. So he's really thriving. He's kind of coming into his prime the next couple of years, age wise and stuff. So I wasn't a bit surprised to see his development this year because he really is, he's, he's all the attributes to be a top, top player. Obviously, Willie, we don't know yet about the suspensions. Claire, I presume, are going to try and appeal it anyways with players like Rory Hayes and Peter Duggan so important to them. But, like, I suppose they're coming into this one. It's different now. Like, there's a lot of expectation. Can they back up this um, limit performance? Yeah, and I think that, that, that that's the question. And as Saoirse said there, uh, yeah, Claire, on the performance of... Uh, the week or the monster finally it's a yeah clear all day but wexford are you know they're building nicely have a lot of freedom in their play they've gone to the brink as regards having to win and win and kick any the night uh to stay in the championship and i think that's that's you know that's that that that, that that's testament to them they they went up there they won in nolan park for the first time in years and i think that that, that that'll give them huge confidence but i think the the two suspensions will will play a not a big role in this as regards if those two guys are gone clear are severely limited as regards uh to, to, to getting to the level of performance like they did in 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 the in the Munster final, so it's a yeah fascinating contest. I think Wexford, uh, as we know, will bring a huge crowd of people to Turles to to support their team, and like that 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 does make a difference as regards when the, when the pressure is on. And I suppose the, the the two or three COVID years we've had in empty stadiums, uh, you know that 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 variable was taken out. Now it's back, and I think uh, that'll make a make make a big difference on Sunday. So I I, I think. Yes, Claire for me, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if if, if Wexford did something uh, because their trajectory is nice. They're 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 they're, they're playing very very well. I, I just hope, and again, and maybe it's a focus area we, we've we've spoken about this morning. Free taking doesn't come back to 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 to, to hurt them because they, it's something that you know they, they, they've probably been 75 percent uh, scoring. You need 95, 90, 100 percent to to win the big games, as we saw in the Leinster final with TJ Reid and, and other games. So I hope that doesn't come back to bite them, but. But, uh, yeah, very interesting game. And I think Claire on form, yes. But uh, it wouldn't surprise me with Wexford. And my apologies, guys. I have to jump. So that's uh, – that's, uh, we'll t- have a great weekend. All right. We'll chat See you later. See you later. See you, Ron. See you, bye. And, Ron, just on Wexford, like, the inside line, like, they have played Chin and McDonald in their stages together. And, like, they pose a real threat. Oh, yeah, pose, pose a massive threat. You know, look, I think – Wexford, Wexford are coming with nice momentum as 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 kind of Shearsha alluded to there. You know they're coming on the back of they got a big score at the, at the weekend against Kerry and people will say actually look it was only Kerry and that's fair enough. But you know when you score heavily, your confidence is in. You know you get a check. You know your your no matter who the opposition is, your confidence is up. You know and you know like I'm not sure who the sports psychologist is with with Claire, but they're going to have a big job to do on the back of the kind of Limerick game, you know, because Clare went to the well there massively, you know, in terms of went toe-to-toe, did everything right, and still came out on the wrong side of the, the result, you know, so getting them back into the headspace, never mind the physical space, to compete is going to be a big job, and you know, Wexford start well, you know, Clare, we see a bit of self-doubt comes in maybe, etc, but you know, so I think, you know, Wexford up front, particularly with the two guys in there, you know, 
two two very physically imposing players too. Now very skillful players, but you know, Chin in particular is some unit. Like you know, if he gets the ball in the hand, he's going to be difficult to stop. You know, and um, and you know that that's where I think you know the suspensions can also play a massive role here because you know will Clare have players of the same caliber to replace the two guys if they're suspended? Now, you know, like for me. Limerick are head and shoulders above everybody else. But you look at how they performed the first day against Cork in the Munster Championship with their full deck and in inverted commas, you know, Keane Lynch and everything on the field, right? We ain't missing Keane Lynch, despite how good the other players are in Limerick, you know, has probably brought them back a wee bit more towards the pack, so to speak. Clare wouldn't have anywhere near as strong a panel as Limerick in terms of the quality of their bench, etc. So for me that becomes a big, big factor here on Saturday, you know, and to be missing the two boys, particularly to be missing one of them in the, in the, in the full back line with Chin and with, with McDonald floating about, you know, that potentially could tip the, the, the scales in the favour of, uh, of Wexford very, very easily, you know. So, you know, Wexford, very dangerous up front. Um, they're defending well as well. Look at some of their defending that day in Nolan Park was, was was fantastic in terms of last minute hooks and and blocks etc. Um, you know, and while kind of Clare were outstanding against Limerick, you know, my concern would just be from you know managing teams in the past and dealing with players. Sometimes it's very hard to to, to pick players up from a defeat like that. You know, and and to get them tuned in etc. You know, like that that'll have been a big focus for Brian and his management team over the over the over the last week or so. You know. There can be a lot of confidence taken from that though as well, Tisha, with the performance and even like you're looking, Mark Rogers is working his way back to fitness. Um, even Shane Meehan when he came on, like like there is impact coming from that Claire bench as well. Yeah, there is, and I suppose the one thing I think that was probably a help is that they had the two week break. I think if they were out again last Saturday, I, I wouldn't have given them much of a chance because it would be very very hard as Ron and sit there. So psychologically, <coughs> excuse me, pick yourself up after going to the well and throwing everything that they had at Limerick and just coming up short, it will be difficult. But, and I know how difficult it is with teams when you do that to try and pick them up again. I just feel that there was a drive maybe within Clare that they want another crack at Limerick this year. Um, but the, the impending suspensions could have a huge bearing on it. Now, the strange thing was, I said the last time when they took off Peter Duggan, I was slightly surprised they didn't kind of go like with like and try and Shanahan because at that stage when do you you know you you chain me and I think um was it Rogers finished up inside in the full forward ring two similar players and they were sort of bombing balls in you know you you were probably lacking a bit of physicality but I mean having said that Shane Meehan's a fantastic talent as is Mark Rogers but um so they have impact they still have Aaron Shanahan who for some reason didn't get a look in the last day. Then I thought maybe he was carrying a knock. I thought when they took off Pete or maybe Aaron Shanner was the was the kind of the like for like guy to go to go in there. Um I just I don't know why what it is. I just have a feeling that Wexford, as I said, it's hard to be a team you know, three years in a row when there isn't much between the sides. And I, I just think that the suspensions, a lot could come down in these these two suspensions. That if they are if they are suspended, I think there'll be a huge loss, particularly as Ron's in that full back line. Connor Cleary's a big physical guy. He'll still be there, but Rory Hayes has had a very good couple of years. He's going to be a huge loss. Um, are they going to put in maybe a Jack Brown or someone like that? Who knows? Um, and the other side of the field then is even something as simple as with Peter Duggan. Um, you know, with Tony Kelly having an off day with the freeze, Peter Duggan came on and I'd say got four out of four. So if he's out the next and if Tony Kelly has an off day with the freeze, who are they going to turn to? Maybe someone like David Reedy, who again, you know, is a good free taker, but wouldn't be used to taking freeze consistently at that level you know it takes him to club a good bit but again that's a huge step up so I think an offer actually could come down to the suspension to be honest I, and I think if the, if the guys aren't suspended uh, you'd probably margin give clear the nod but I just have a sneak and feel a bit like the first game now on Saturday I think they're two very very evenly balanced games and they're very very hard to call you know Who are you looking at here Ronan? Yeah um, to be honest I would agree with Shirsha on the basis that I think it all depends on the suspensions, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, now, I think it's not a terrible thing to be saying, though. You know, like, you know, that that two retrospective suspensions could effectively impact on on whether somebody kind of qualifies for an All-Ireland semi-final or, 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 or not, you know. And I think, you know, um, 
it's something that you know pundits need to start taking on board. You know, for me, Geroid Haggerty got sent off against Clare in the in the round robin game yeah. on the back of a campaign that was driven around. You know, oh, he's loose with the hurley or whatever the case may be. You know, um, and you know for no other reason because for me neither of the two were yellows that day. But that, that that's the secondary point. But I do think that you know the the fact that this could come down to retrospective suspensions, I think, doesn't reflect well on 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 hurley. And um, I think if Clare have their full pack, I would expect them to win and win narrowly. And um, I think if they're missing. The two lads, um, I would give Wexford the a very hesitant vote of um vote to win. Um, I think that, you know, the Clare full back line has been very good, and um, to be missing Rory Hayes potentially leaves them vulnerable to what is a good Wexford full forward line. And um, Jack Brown is if he comes in as a good player. I think the one thing that I would or my one kind of concern of Jack is that he probably possibly certainly in the past has had a tendency. To foul and um, and to 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 give away freeze, um, and you know certainly you know I I just feel and I also think that Peter Duggan would be a big loss up there not only from an aerial height perspective not only from his ability to score, but also the fact that as as Sish also put he gives you a backup option from a free taking perspective which is massive because being a good free taker for your club being a good free taker down in an empty park Esther or an empty backfield or whatever is very different than standing over the ball with 45,000 people there uh, all watching and you need to score that for free to put your team into the all Ireland semi-final, so to speak. Um, so, you know, I think this all hinges on the suspensions, if I'm being honest, unfortunately. I think if the two guys um, win their appeals, and I'm assuming they're appealing, um, I think Clare will, will win. If not, I think um, Wexford will sneak over the line. The, the real sad thing for me, Rona, with all this is that we're talking about two suspensions after what was an unbelievable game. Oh, absolutely. You know, and that's and, and, and a fantastic performance by John Keenan. That's yep. the real annoying thing. Like that again, you <laughs> pundits who are on, you know, television week in, we go at times trying to justify their reason for being there. And they're looking at things from all different angles, slow down to within an inch of their lives. And, and here we are literally what, four days out. Do the players even know, have they been suspended yet? Or when will they find out their proposed suspensions? Have they actually been suspended yet, Paul? You know, and at that, at that stage, then the whole appeal process will kick in. You know, will it actually be held until after this weekend? Will they be available to play? When when is the hearing? It's 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 and it's it's difficult for the players and the team for both teams like to be preparing because no matter what you say, you're going to be blown away for saying right. Are these lads going to be suspended? Are they not? And that's human nature. You can't kind of block that out. You're obviously going to try and prepare with them in in play and and not playing. But it's just it's a shame, really, because I said the game was so good, the referee was so good, and it, it's a shame that it's come to this, you know. Absolutely, but we're definitely set for uh, two crackers uh, this weekend in the Um Absolutely, two massive games. To look forward to, it. but lads, uh, thanks a million for your time. No problem. Thanks, Paul.